know, talk to us a little bit. Maybe players they should protect. Maybe if they could have the opportunity to protect more players and maybe players on this list you think might get drafted. Yeah. Kevin has an article. Kevin Barral wrote it up today about Ooh. highlighting a handful of guys, but mainly it's the obvious no brainer should be Dilla Santos and Cerna, the ones that were just acquired at the deadline, the ones that were just really good hitters against older competition this year. De Los Santos in particular is knocking on the door of being in the big leagues. Cerna is, I guess, a little more interesting just because he barely has any experience above high A. It was only a couple months that he played at double A and then one week that he played at triple A at the very end of the season. Still somebody that is one of the better prospects in this organization. And you would think somewhat of a no brainer to protect, especially because as I showed before, they do have two open spots right now. They could select right. two guys without making any corresponding moves at all. And then the question is whether they get creative in order to create room for anybody else on this list right here. You see some familiar names that you probably haven't thought of in a while, like Paul McIntosh. He's eligible for the first time. Troy Johnson for the second time or the third time already. This is already the third time that I think Troy is rule five eligible. Last year was the fascinating people remember that that followed our coverage is how much we talked about Troy last year at this time when they didn't select him. And then he didn't get picked in the rule five and stayed around, but he's eligible again. You see uh, an Isaac favorite, Cody Morissette. You see an Alex Carver favorite, Jordan McCants. <laughs> Those guys are eligible for the first time, but ones that just frankly haven't performed the way that they were expected to as early round draft picks. If you go all the way to the bottom, of this group that I cut off right here, you see Dax Fulton and he is me, the biggest wild card here. He himself was a very early draft pick back in 2020. We haven't seen him on the field for almost two years coming off another Tommy John surgery, his second career Tommy John. Before that, he was one of the best prospects in this whole organization. He just had a lot of promising starter traits and he performed well at the double A level when he was still at the time, maybe 21 years old at the end of that, right before that second surgery that he had right there. The upside is fascinating. Realistically, he's probably not going to help you win games at the major league level. And ultimately, that's what I kind of want to hammer home here is the line that these teams are walking, where you want to acquire good prospects that are unprotected, but these guys also need to stick on your major league roster for the entire season, either on the active roster or they can spend part of that on the IL, but you cannot send them down to the minors for that whole full first year, unless you pass them through waivers and unless they basically lose all their value anyway. It's a fascinating dance that they have to walk here with somebody like Dax, just because it, it's a long shot that he's going to help you win games right now, but the upside is pretty good if he's healthy. Yeah. Just keep in mind a, a really interesting example. Last year's rule five deadline and rule five draft was Nassim Nunez. He was not someone that I even had on, I think any of us had on our radar for someone that could get selected. He was just so young, so far away from being big league ready offensively. And yet the national selected him, played him. Well, I think it was 13 at bats through the first three or four months of the season that they were willing to sacrifice a bench spot on their major league active roster while they were being somewhat competitive just to keep Nassim Nunez. I was so shocked <laughs> that he didn't inevitably get returned to the Marlins because they would realize that, hey, having a you know, a 13th position player being wasted on the bench like that was ridiculous. I guess that did come in handy when they had to send down C.J. Abrams for gambling at 6 in the morning. But, um, yeah, there. I think Eli's right. Dax Fulton is the wild card here. I don't. I, I would find it very shocking if... Um, if he were to be protected, I think they're just going to use those two slots for Cerna and Del Santos. Who was the fourth guy that the great Kevin mentioned in his article? It was, um, he mentioned Zach McCambly, right? Which, that's right. <laughs> yeah. Which was frankly, he's the same draft class as Dax Fulton is. And yeah. Frankly, I, I do not see that happening at all. He's staying, yeah. Um, he just, he, he's coming off a lost season. And at this point, what, was why I left that in there as an editor, why I felt it was valuable to still mention a reliever is because when all is said and done and the dust settles, relievers are the most common players that change hands during the rule five draft, because those are the yes. guys that mm -hmm. it's easiest to find a spot for them at the major league level. They could be just one little tweak away from being usable, even if they have no big league experience, even if they have shaky minor league results. So even though we spend a lot of the time focusing on the bigger names and the ones that could have more upside as an everyday player or as a starting pitcher. Usually the way this goes is that it's 
uh, the majority of the guys that get picked are the ones that are relievers that have pitched in, in the upper minors. So that's there are a lot of relievers on this list. Basically, all those names in the bottom half, various relievers, some with injury histories, some that just have not performed very well that you probably haven't thought of, that we don't consider anywhere near the top prospects in this organization. But yet those are the guys at the end of the day that could get picked if there's another team that sees something mm-hmm. in their stuff that they think is legit. Right. Gee, MD Johnson is as old as Troy already. Jesus. Oh, I, I can't wait to hear that he's a stud when he's carving up double A hitters next year. 